hello everyone welcome back to my channel prince automation destination so in our last lecture of java oops for test automation framework we discussed about one form of polymorphism that is method overloading and in today's lecture we are going to cover method overriding right which is another form of polymorphism in case you are not already familiar with overloading i'll request you to please go back to my previous video which i'll be sharing in the description section okay so uh, before we discuss about method overriding we will discuss or we will cover inheritance as well because uh, method overriding will come into the picture when we will be dealing with inheritance so we will try to understand uh, each one of these uh, step by step okay so what is inheritance in java so before we discuss about inheritance in java let us try to understand inheritance from the real time uh, real life right so for example our father is running some business so by default it would be ours right it would be our business because we are the child of our parent right so same thing is applicable in java but it is not by default available we need to create some parent child relation between the classes and why do we why do we do this we do this to achieve the reusability let us try to understand from the real time example so in order to understand it from the java perspective what i have done i have created three classes one is parent second is child and third is main which is an invoking class right now uh, for example uh, as per the discussion father is doing one business doing business let us say right and let us say he is doing offline business right now in order to be reused or in order order this method to be inherited to, to some other class what we need to do we need to use the concept of inheritance in java so how we can do that using extends keyword we can inherit parent right so now you see that this child is extending parent so by default whatever the method is available in parent would be available to the child as well so how we can confirm that so for that purpose what we will do we will simply create one child object and so in order to create one child object what i have done i am i have moved to main class and in main class i have created one child object right and in child class and I, now using this child object if i try to access method of this child i'm able to see doing business which is nothing but the parent class method because in child we don't have any method yet right so you see that this child is able to inherit the parent class methods so this is how the inheritance works so let us try to execute this particular program so when we will execute this program so we will see that it is printing offline business meaning it is calling the parent method right so this is the concept of inheritance now this child can have uh, other methods as well so for example he can have public void doing job so child can do job as well along with the father business right so for example i am mentioning i am doing job right and now uh, let us try to understand overriding right what is method overriding so um, method overriding is when the child has exact same name method like parent then it's overriding and it is also known as runtime polymorphism right before we discuss about how we can achieve method overriding then we will come to why it is known as runtime polymorphism right so as it says if the child class has exact same method name like parent then it's overriding but as of now you see the parent has a separate method and child has a separate method so it is not inheriting so far so if i go to main class and if i for now uh, see so i can see doing job as well as doing business this doing business is of now parent for now right now for example uh, child is of modern uh, generation let us say he want to modify the business so how he can uh, do that so for that purpose what he will have to do in java he will have to come to parent copy paste the same uh, method and now for example he converted this business into the online business so 
if I go to the definition when the child class has the exact same method name like parent then it's overriding so you see that it started showing O as well which is nothing but overriding right so you see this is how a child class can override the functionality of parent right so how to confirm that now for example if I go to parent uh, this main method sorry and if I try to now run this particular uh, program I'll see that I'm getting online business while previously I was getting offline business which was uh, parent business right now the child has modified first of all he has inherited the functionality and then uh, then after he has overridden the functionality right so this is the concept of method overriding right now coming to why it is known as runtime polymorphism let us try to understand the same because uh, if we look at the definition because depending on parent or child object parent or ch child class method would be invoked so let us try to uh, understand the same so now for example uh, I'm commenting this section because this is covered let us say I'm creating one object of parent and then I'm creating parent object I have first created the parent reference variable and then I'm creating another parent reference variable and giving it name like parent one and this time I'm creating object of child because uh, we can refer a child object by parent as well right now if I for example parent dot doing business similarly if I will do parent one dot doing business right so you see uh, uh, like I'm calling uh, the parent uh, doing business method using the parent object and in this case I'm calling the doing business uh, method using the child object but the reference variable is parent right so now when we will run this method we will understand why it is runtime polymorphism so you see when it is a parent object then we are calling the parent method which is offline business when it is a child object we are calling the child method which is a online business right so now coming back to the definition because depending on the parent or child object if we are creating the parent object then the parent class method would be called if we are creating the child object then the child class method would be invoked so this is what is happening that's why this doing business would be decided at the runtime depending on the type of object created that's why it is known as runtime polymorphism now we have understood uh, this uh, inheritance and method overriding in Java so now the time is to how to implement it in the test automation framework so in test automation framework we usually deal with page object model so in page object model we have one common page which is sometimes known as base page as well that will have some common functionality which we can use in the all the pages right so for example we have click functionality we have display functionality we have page lead load functionality so for now i have considered click now how we can implement this uh, common functionality to all other pages so same we can achieve it using inheritance so this is how we can use inheritance in java in the page object model now you see that in base page i have written one click method right which is the general click right and it is applicable to for example all the pages now on login page which is inheriting base page due to some reason let us say uh, one second due to some reason uh, the uh, due to some reason this click functionality is not working let us say right so uh, what we can do we can simply uh, override this particular method so how to override we will copy paste this, this method and then we will modify the definition so in order to modify the definition what we have done we are trying it with the javascript executor right okay so this this particular concept is known as method overriding and this is how we can implement method overriding in the uh, test automation framework so let us try to understand it from the uh, like demonstration point of view so um, for this example currently we are using uh, bdd based uh, cucumber cucumber bdd based framework where we have one feature file we have feature files then we have corresponding step definitions we have pages as well where we have written the page object model and in order to uh, like bind this feature file with the step definitions we are using one runner right so runner is used to execute the test cases okay 
so by providing the test case tag we can run the test cases like this right so this is the high level overview of btd cucumber framework that we are using in case you are not comfortable or not already aware on the btd cucumber framework i'll request you to go back to my btd cucumber uh, framework i'll be sharing the link of same in the i icon above uh, you can take a look and understand more on the btd cucumber okay so now uh, corresponding uh, i'm just uh, explaining at high level so we have uh, written this in the gherkin or in the normal language right in btd this is how we write the test case so we are using one sample uh, source demo uh, application wherein i'm first launching the url then after i am entering username and password and then we are performing login and later we are verifying the products right now uh, if you see we have feature file corresponding to this we have step definition right and corresponding to this we have a page object model right so to keep it quick what i have done i have created one base page class and then i have inherited this uh, base page into login page so that i can utilize whatever the common functionality is in the base page so this is how we can implement uh, the inheritance right now uh, let us try to replicate what we uh, just discussed right so first we will create this method right so in order to create this method i'll simply use public void click and i'm um, x in this method we are accepting it expecting element so element dot click right now if i go to login page i don't have any functionality so i have functionality i'm just removing it i was using doing some practice so ignore this part okay so by default i don't have now i don't have any functionality right so how to um, now for example uh, if i for example go from uh, this what i'm doing i'm launching the url i'm entering the username and password so when i'm entering username and password i'm creating the object of login page so what i'm doing first of all at top i have defined the reference variable of login page and herein i'm defining the i'm creating the object and then after i'm assigning it to the uh, login page reference variable and this is uh, username uh, locator that we have defined similarly we have defined password so we got the reference object of login page now right and we are using the same across all the steps okay so once we have entered username and password now the next step is to click on the login button right so to click on the login button i'm uh, just going here so using login page dot click so if uh, i see I'm, when I'm clicking on this, I'm navigating to the base page. So you see that I'm on the base page. Why it is navigating to the base page? Because login page does not have this click functionality and it is getting this functionality due to some inheritance. So by acquiring the property. Right? Now, when I will try to execute this particular test case. So let me make it like this uh, readable. S out base page uh, click right so i'm going here as i mentioned that i need to copy this i'll have to go to runner and then i'll have to provide this tag okay and when i will run this particular uh, uh, test case what will happen in this case let us see so we see that it logged in and it clicked on the login button as well so you see that it went into the base page click right now for example uh, as of now as it is working but for example consider that it is not working in the login page so what we will do we can uh, override the functionality so how to override the functionality for that purpose what we will do we will simply copy paste this content and we will go to login page and now we will modify this behavior i will make it like login page click and then after i have kept that code snippet of javascript executor so think like it was not working fine with the normal click and it will work with the javascript executor right so this is what we have replicated right so this is what we are trying so we have extended the base page and then after we are overriding the functionality right so using the javascript executor now i'm performing the click okay so when I now again I am coming back to this particular feature file if I go to click on login if I now go and click on this I am navigating to the login page right 
and when I will run this particular uh, test case again this time the control will go to this particular click max method right so this is uh, if you take a look at it uh, so we are uh, like um, uh, invoking the uh, child class method this time so this is how we can implement inheritance as well as method overriding in the uh, test automation framework so why we need inheritance uh, let us try to understand or let us try to recap inheritance is required to achieve the reusability and why do we need method overriding because um, suppose some functionality is not working in the child classes so sometimes we need to modify the behavior in those cases we use the concept of method overriding and this is this is one example where we have utilized method overriding as well as um, inheritance concept uh, so thank you uh, guys for watching the lecture and i would request you to please like share and subscribe my video thank you once again